We turn now to the Arctic. Just this week, the National Snow and Ice Data Center announced this year's Arctic sea ice shrank to the second lowest in recorded history. And it's not just polar bears that will suffer. In this week's It's Not Too Late, our Ginger Z takes a look at how native indigenous communities are fighting to protect their land. Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. Or is it? When you're talking about the hunk of ice that sits at the top of the Northern Hemisphere, between Canada, Alaska, Greenland, and Russia, the inclination is to kind of feel like it is too late. This week alone, that Arctic sea ice melted to the second lowest level since thorough satellite records began 42 years ago. But get this, records go back even farther, and they show that the rate of melting is unprecedented. So these paleoclimate scientists who look at the history of climate thousands of years ago have used things like tree rings and sediment cores and ice cores to actually piece together the history of Arctic sea ice. And we know from this one particular record that used all of these clues that again, the rate of change today is unprecedented for at least 1500 years. Now we've all been threatened with the sad polar bear pictures for most of our lives, but every time one of these is posted, the skeptics emerge. But you'll have someone still say, well, we do know that there was a time where the Arctic was tropical. Why couldn't we just be going back into a natural cycle 125,000 years later? No, there isn't a natural cycle that we are currently in that could explain this rate of change we are experiencing today, the warming of the Arctic, the loss of sea ice area, the thinning of the sea ice, it's just there's no natural cycle that would line up to give us this rate of change. So it is happening. We are accelerating it. And it's melting not just from the top, but from the bottom too. Where does most of the heating that is going on in the Earth's environmental system driven by greenhouse gas emissions, where does most of that heat go? Into the ocean. And so that warmer water underneath the ice is changing the whole water structure of the Arctic Ocean. And even more importantly, the quality of the ice is not the same. The age of the ice, basically how many summers it's lived through, is very strongly correlated with the thickness. It's that loss of that multi-year ice being replaced by first-year ice, which is much thinner. It's much more susceptible to being disrupted. Okay, now we've got all that out of the way so we can focus. Yes, less Arctic sea ice is a problem for this guy, but more urgently for them. Temperatures in the Arctic are warming more than twice as fast as they are here in the middle latitudes. So the impacts are greater for these real people with real rapidly changing lives. There is significant lack of sea ice that is occurring um, within the region. It's further out than what we're used to. So a couple of generations, you know, they're risking their life for food security for our people. We certainly have communities in Alaska that are imminently threatened with not being able to be there. They are one storm away. If everything goes wrong, those communities will not be inhabitable as they are now. There are almost 150,000 people in small native communities that have been around for thousands of years in the Arctic. And some of them have seen their water sources drain from erosion. A river was eating up the bank that was um, dividing between the water reservoir and the ocean. That bank eroded and their reservoir drained late in the summertime. And that's, that's a big deal because now we only have a couple of months until things start freezing up and until you are only relying on your water storage container. Their sources of food increasingly difficult to hunt. Most of our communities are coastal communities and our whole life is connected with the process of hunting whales. One of the biggest changes that we're experiencing as a community is the sea ice, the changes in sea ice patterns and learning how to navigate those to safely hunt. The sea ice conditions are just too dangerous. And life as they know it changed forever.
We had very low sea ice during the winter in the Bering Sea, which is between Russia and Alaska. And one of these communities relies on this strip of sea ice as, as an airfield to fly in supplies during the winter because there's no roads. But because the ice was so low that year, they took a picture of what normally is the airport and it was just open water. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing all of these impacts to communities that live along the Arctic and it's happening all throughout the course of the year. The plight of the people who take the brunt of our changing climate are featured in The Last Ice. It's a documentary directed by Dr. Enric Sala for National Geographic. In these last years, to be a hunter has become very hard. It started as an environmental film. We wanted to see what was the effect of the loss of eyes on the animals, but it ended up being a film about indigenous rights, about the, the livelihoods, the culture, the traditions of the Inuit of Canada and Greenland, and how climate change is affecting them. And of course, the animals are key to their traditions and to their livelihoods and, and their food system. So it, it is all about the Inuit. And that's just it. These folks have adapted for millennia. It's up to us now to help them adapt and to slow our carbon roll. Our indigenous cultures have been here, they're adaptable. But the rapidity of the change that we're seeing now, that's gonna be a stress on all human cultures. For people who are not from the Arctic, you know, you can take out a person from these places, but you really cannot take out the essence, the holistic connection it's still in their periphery. It's still within them. It's always going to be within them, regardless of where you know they end up in the world. So here's the part where I can look at you with a smile and greater confidence, saying it's not too late. If we phase out fossil fuels and invest in renewable energies, if we change the way we produce food, both on land and the ocean, and work with indigenous groups to protect at least 30% of the planet by 2030, then we have a chance of slowing the warming of the planet and the destabilization of the climate, returning to a place with more balance, more predictability, and more stable conditions for, for human livelihoods and human dignity. I find that incredibly uh, calming or comforting to know that we do have some part in it the amount of warming really differentiates between climate models, suggesting how much of a role the amount of fossil fuel emissions is going to play in the evolution of our future Arctic. So I think it's optimistic in that regard that we still have a chance to prevent this ominous idea of zero ice. I'm Ginger Z, and it is not too late, even with Arctic sea ice. National Geographic's documentary, The Last Ice, will be released next month. And we should mention that National Geographic is a division of the Walt Disney Company, the parent company of ABC News. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.